All right. Well, it is now uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce our guest speaker tonight uh, for tonight, who's been uh, patiently uh, waiting in the wings. And uh, tonight, I have you uh, in the wings there, Nina Conception. So those that uh, have never met Nina before or don't know who she is, uh, she is a sales coach, a trainer, uh, a speaker, author, and uh, she's the CEO of the Institute of Conscious Sales. Uh, and uh, what her uh, role is, she supports coaches and entrepreneurs um, in their uh, businesses, and uh, she's really global. She's got a global business, so she's got clients from uh, I think about twelve different countries uh, building their businesses. And uh, her and what she does is help them go from zero. So if you've got an idea, not quite sure where to go with it, or you've just started in business, uh, or you've been in business for a while, start from zero and up to uh, multiple six figures. So uh, that's always the uh, goal for um, uh, businesses when they're starting up is to get into that uh, six figure uh, bracket there. So she's got over a decade of experience in sales um, and she has the distinction of being the youngest top five sales earner uh, in a real estate company. Uh, and she did that at the age of uh, 22. So from there, she's uh, gone on to build her own business and she's uh, she walks the talk. She's taken her uh, business through into that uh, six-figure bracket. And what's amazing about that is she's done it all organically without paying for ads. She's just done it all organically on uh, social uh, media. So uh, that was uh, that was an accomplishment in her early 30s there. So uh, she has been um, uh, around uh, and spoken uh, quite quite a bit. Uh, so you may have seen her on uh, Yahoo. She's spoken at TEDx in the UK. So um, that's a uh, uh, anyone sort of knows those TEDx uh, talks, I uh, get addicted to those when they come through on uh, YouTube. Um, so she's been one of those speakers, uh, and I know that's a really rigorous process to get through that there. She's spoken at the Sydney Mind uh, Body Spirit Festival, uh, NLP Worldwide, Juice Plus, Isogenics, and at the University of New South Wales. And she's been featured on a uh, ton of podcasts as well, too. Um, she's written a book uh, called The Naked You, A Guide to Embracing Your Imperfections in Life and Business, which I have read. So uh, it is a uh, really good read as well, too. And uh, from that book there, her audience has named her The Naked Coach. So I'd love you to put your uh, hands together and uh, let's give Nina a warm welcome to uh, tonight's show. Thank you so much. You're making me blush, Nick. I didn't realize you'd already finished reading my pretty thin book. It's a very easy, easy book to read. So yes, I am naked on the front cover, um, but it's a metaphor for vulnerability. And so I just want to say first and foremost, I feel honored to be here. I feel blessed to be connecting with amazing humans who have something on their heart that they are here to share and here to birth. And so the way that I love to run workshops and trainings and masterclasses is I'm very interactive. And one of the reasons why I like to do that is because as much as I do love speaking, I also love connecting with other people. And we actually get the most out of an experience, the more involved we get and the more our emotions are heightened. So I'm really going to encourage you guys to put some information in the chat, engage with me. If you have any questions, if you have any um, disempowering beliefs around sales that you'd love to share, any questions that you have, I really want to encourage you to really leverage the time that we have and pick my brain as much as you can. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start talking. I'm going to start sharing. I am very aware that I can talk very fast. So luckily, with a lot of the speaking work that I've done, particularly filming my audiobook and being on the TEDx stage, it's really allowed me to practice slowing down. Because for those people who know me quite well, especially in a, in a, um, a social interaction, I can talk very, very fast. So I do have my assistant here in the chat as well. So if you're thinking, oh, what did Nina say again? Just ask in the chat, what, what was that sentence again? Um, and my assistant, Chris, has literally heard me say my the same quotes over and over and over again. And she knows what my quotes are. So she'll be able to help you guys out with that. 
Okay, so I would love for you all to put into the chat. And for those of you who are here but are not necessarily on video, I'd love to encourage you to turn your video on so I can see your beautiful face and so that I can feel like I'm actually speaking to some human beings as opposed to just computers. <laughs> okay, so I would love for you to put into the chat what is your intention for being here with me over the next hour? And maybe what are some of the challenges that you have when it comes to sales? Please know that there isn't anything that I haven't already heard. Everybody typically has the same fears, the same concerns, the same insecurities when it comes to growing a business, when it comes to being an entrepreneur, and when it comes to sales in particular, because most people have never actually been trained in sales, let alone trained in a very ethical way. So I would love for you to put into the chat what, uh, and for those of you listening to the replay or watching the replay, really have a think about that. What comes up for you when you think about sales? I do go into a lot of depth around why your imperfections are the key to conscious sales in my TED Talk. You guys can literally Google your uh, Google my name and TED Talk and, and you'll find it. But the content that I will be covering today will go a little bit deeper as I have the amazing opportunity to speak to entrepreneurs. The TED Talk was definitely for the wider community. It's, it's just the general public. So I'm going to read some of these intentions and comments just because I feel like for those of you watching the replay, you'll see yourself in a lot of these comments. I don't like being sold to, so it feels horrible to be the one selling. Mm. Pete D, I love to improve my sales con um, conversions to that so that it becomes from, so that comes a position of helping. To learn challenge has always been what I'm trying to sell, have made a course, which is my planned business. I like buying things. I prefer buying to selling. So I like people to buy from me without having to sell to them. Yes. Okay. I'm going to drop a few one-liners for you guys. Okay. First and foremost, sales is a transfer of enthusiasm. If you are not deeply passionate and you do not deeply care about what it is that you are offering, how can you in your integrity offer anything from a heart-centered place if you don't genuinely believe that you're going to improve someone's life and or business with the product or service that you are going to be offering? Sales is also heightened communication. I say that it's communication on steroids. So the skills that I have learned through sales, through uh, having a, a lot of my experience initially in real estate is really managing people's expectations. A very simple example is my partner. When we started dating and he kept trying to fix everything, I would just say, I don't need you to try and fix it. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling about this. So in sales, we call that pre-framing. One of my best friends calls me the pre-framing queen because I am constantly pre-framing everyone about everything. This is what we're about to do. This is what's going to happen. Even my daughter, I have a, a four-year-old daughter. After this game, you're going to brush your teeth and you're, we're going to go to bed. Okay. So sales, a, a lot of sales is really a mindset, managing expectations and very heightened communication. And this is why integrity is incredibly important when it comes to sales, incredibly important. Something that you may have heard often in the personal development world, but particularly when it comes to service-based industries and sales, is we always want to under-promise and over-deliver. For example, if Nick said to me, Nina, can you please make sure that you send through your your bio and your headshot before this interview. And I would have said, when, when do you need that by? And let's say he said, oh, I need it by Friday. If I know for a fact, as much as possible, let's say it's Monday, even if it's not Monday, but just for this example, let's say I know, I'm pretty sure I can get it to him by the end of today. I will say, I will get it to you by Tuesday at the latest. Because if I had said to Nick, I will get it to him today, 
and then I get it to him first thing in the morrow, first thing tomorrow, there is still a lack of trust and a lack of rapport. And one of the things that I have learned in real estate is you don't even need to lie if you communicate something to someone and they understand it a certain way and you don't communicate the facts that you actually don't know it for a fact, they will turn around and say that you've lied and you've lost the business. So when it comes from an integrity standpoint, it's really important that we remember to overemphasize the gaps of maybe something that we don't know. And that's something that allowed me to really build trust very quickly in real estate was I actually don't know the answer to this question. So please do not hold me to this answer. I think that it might be between this and this. However, I'm going to get back to you in the next couple of days. Is that okay? When a lot of people say, oh no, I think the owner will take this much. And then when they, when the, when the, real estate agent goes back to the buyer and says, oh no, that they're, they're not willing to take it. But you said they were willing to take it. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes. You... And then you get into an argument. <laughs> so when it comes to being an entrepreneur, you are your message. You are your brand. I'm now going to share with you guys what my definition is of conscious sales. This is a slightly longer definition compared to what I shared on my TED talk. However, in a container like this, I have more time to be able to explain and articulate what this actually means, even though I know it's very wordy. So what I want you guys to do first and foremost is I would love for you to feel the words and the vibration of what I'm saying. And Chris can put the definition into the chat. So if you wanted to copy and paste it, you're more than welcome to do that. However, I don't want you to intellectualize the words. I want you to feel how this definition feels for you. So my definition of conscious sales is conscious sales is a heart-centered, ethical and integrity-driven approach to sales that empowers the individual to invest into themselves when it's in alignment with their own values. And one of the biggest difference from traditional sales to conscious sales is we are not here to manipulate, convince, push anyone. That is not a conversation when it comes to me and my clients and me and my container. We are here to find the people who are ready, willing, wanting to work with us. And so it becomes a conversation of how ready are they? How willing are they? How much are they wanting it? And where are they at in the journey of kind of want it, to, yeah, I want it a little bit to, oh no, I really want it and I want it right now. And that's a different type of buyer. And so the mindset that we are moving people through is very much about managing expectations, very high level communication, and very much about a relationship between you and your customer and you and your buyer. So one of the things that I share with people is People, no one will ever buy from you until they feel seen, heard, and understood. And there's two aspects to feeling seen, heard, and understood. The buyer needs to feel seen, heard, and understood. But you as a service provider needs to be able to see, hear, and understand them as well. It doesn't work if it's one-sided. It has to work both ways. Let me just have a look at a few more of these comments. I think we've got a question here. Transfer of enthusiasm. Yes, 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 yes. How do you handle those days where you are encountering lots of negative comments, negative people? How do you control your mindset to stay in the headspace you need to? That's a great question, David. There's so many, there's so many things I can talk about on this. <laughs> the first thing I would say is one of my favorite quotes. I don't actually know who says it, but the quote is the tree that stands the tallest gets the most wind. So 
when you think about the impact that you know in your soul and in your heart you are here to make, the bigger the game you play, the more negative feedback you're going to get. People who play small don't get any negative feedback. Rarely, if any. We really need to get to a point where people either hate us or love us. And if we're trying to please everybody, we end up not doing and making the impact that we're here to be able to, to make. Statistically, one in three people will like you. One in three people will not like you. And one in three people will not know if they like you or not. So the sooner we can come to an acceptance that one in three people are never going to like us, whether we bend our back, whether we throw our morals out the window, whether we give them everything they want, they are never going to like us. So we may as well be ourselves. So that mindset around understanding that every time you hit resistance or every time you hit negative feedback or every time you hit a challenge or an obstacle, I have trained myself and I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I have gotten a lot better at training myself in seeing it as an opportunity. So one of my favorite podcasts is Brendan Bouchard's podcast, The Brendan Show. And I remember listening to him once and he said, when people get overwhelmed, like let's say they get overwhelmed here, that is normally a sign for people to back off. Oh, it's too hard. I'm not going to do it. Oh, I'm too overwhelmed. And then they stop taking action. When Brendan says that level of overwhelm happens because we are at the ceiling of what we know. So in order to reach a new level of knowing, a new level of understanding, a new level of skill set to become more valuable in the marketplace in order to make more money and to make a bigger impact, you're going to have to go through that ceiling. So how can we see challenge as an opportunity? How can we see challenge as this is the point where people give up? Am I going to be one of those people? Because that's the truth. Most people will give up, unfortunately. I'm incredibly optimistic. I'm an incredibly optimistic person. However, I have seen time and time again that the reality is most people are not willing to dig deep to go towards what it is that they desire because most people think that they want something, but they don't actually want it. They've taken on societal expectations of what they think they should be doing. And that's why it's really important that when we are selling anything as an entrepreneur, I really believe the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, do we deeply care about what it is that we are offering? If you do not deeply care about it, then you need to find something that you do deeply care about. And when I say deeply care, it doesn't mean, oh, it's a good product. Yeah, like I'm, I'm happy to sell it. No, that's not what I mean by you deeply care. Deeply care means you will talk to that. You will talk to anyone and everyone about the product or service, whether you got paid for it or not. That's deeply caring. And I have dabbled in a lot of network marketing. I have tried to run away from my own message, my own business and I, I tried to look for an easy way out and I realized that if I wasn't talking to people about things that I deeply cared about then I give up because I don't care enough about it it doesn't mean it's not a good product it doesn't mean it's not a good service but something happens when we are an entrepreneur we are tested in a way that people who work in a job are not tested. We are tested in the sense of, are you willing to move through your own insecurities? Are you willing to show up as the most unapologetic, boldest, strongest, fullest version of yourself in order to make the impact that you feel deep within your heart, deep within your soul, you're here to birth. 
you're here to create. And one of the things I talk about in my book was I used to think that my goals and my desires were something that I wanted. I thought it was something, oh, this is what I want to do. But I have come to a realization that it's actually what I'm called to do. I can't switch off wanting it. When you get clearer with the message that you are here to share, you will show up how you need to. And I'm going to share with you guys one of my favorite quotes. This is my quote. If this is the only thing you take away from this talk, I will be very happy. We beat imposter syndrome when we shift our attention from self to service. When we are focused on ourselves, that's when the insecurities come up. That's when we think, who am I to do this? Why would they want to work with me? There's so many amazing people out there already. But if you are sitting in front of someone and they are telling you and opening up their heart to you, telling you that they are struggling in their life or in their business or whatever it is that's going on with them, and you can see a clear path for them because you've walked that path, I can pretty much guarantee every single one of you will offer to help that person because you're thinking about them, not you. You're thinking about how you can help that person, not how much you don't know. Is it tiger or tigger? I'm guessing it's tiger. <laughs> I think there's a secret to reversing business owners' reluctance to engage while well on social media. Facebook seems to still be on popular platform of choice, but even getting likes and shares can be like getting blood out of stone. I want to offer a free advice, which I do. I'm business owners sharing their pics online and so do myself um, into group protection against spamming, trolling, and online negativity. So just quickly before I forget, I want you guys to almost tease your audience. We are not here to give them everything all at once. And there's a very famous saying, when people pay, they pay attention. People first and foremost pay with their time before they pay with their money. So when it comes to social media scrolling, they happen to come across your post most of the time. Many people don't actually intentionally go onto someone's page and consume information. That's People don't do that very often on social media, right? So I want you to almost have a hook, like fishing. You want to have a hook to get them interested. You want to get them in your, in your space, in your container intentionally, like what Nick has done here. And then from there, you're building rapport. You're, you're finding out what their deepest desires are, what their biggest challenges are. And for those who are ready, willing, and wanting, then you offer to help them. And one of the things that I say is we do not ever pitch until we can deeply understand where someone is at. So if you are one of those people who send random pitchy messages from the very first message, guys, please stop doing it. Build rapport first. Get to know that person first. Ask them questions first. We are all sick of getting those spammy messages when there is no relevance to what it is that they're offering to us. People are still, there's still human beings on the other side of that computer, the majority of the time. Get to know that person first. And that's going to be a point of difference in the marketplace when it's so loud right now. Um, I want to work upon the deep tr mistrust against social media and have five simple offers to the group. Cool. So there's some points there. Um, Small, I'm starting small, but quantity over quality. Quantity over quality? Quality over quantity. Um, okay. All by an ice cream. <laughs> What's the name of the podcast? Um, the, the Brendan Show. So when it comes to showing up, I would love to hear from a sales perspective, if you guys would like to share, what are some of the, the biggest challenges that you're finding when it comes to sales? One of the things I love about asking these questions is they're simple questions that I'm asking, but most people don't actually stop to ask themselves a lot of these questions. 
So rather than me just giving you the answer, when you can activate your reticular activating system, does everybody know what your RAS is? Does anybody not know what the reticular activating system is? Can, can I just see a show of hands if you do, you do know RAS? Hands up if you don't know what RAS means. Okay, okay cool, that's okay. So just um, for the benefit of a few people and anyone watching the replay, the reticular activating system is um, a process that our mind uses to know what information to retain and what to ignore and what to let go of. So don't quote me on these exact numbers, but we consume something like 100,000 pieces of information every second with our eyes, right? But our minds can only comprehend about 20,000. So how does your mind know what to take on board and what not to take on board? This is based on your reticular activating system, which is based on where your attention is and your intention. A very simple example, and this is an example that Tony Robbins uses. The room that you are in right now, regardless of where you are, even if you're driving and listening to this podcast, you can still do this, right? Look around and look for the color red and just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now if you close your eyes, how many brown things did you see? Mm, uh, okay, now open your eyes. Oh, brown, one, two, three. Oh my gosh, where, where did all this brown come from? I didn't see a second ago. It doesn't mean that the brown wasn't there. You just weren't looking for it. And I love when Tony says, when we look for something, we even convince our mind that something is brown. Oh, maroon, that's not maroon, that's brown. That's not maroon, that's red. And so, you know, you've, you've probably heard the quote, entrepreneurs need to be a little bit crazy. Only those that are will, that who, who believe they can change the world are the ones who can. So be okay about the fact that you are a little bit crazy. We do need to be overly optimistic sometimes. That's what keeps us going. So most people have not activated their reticular activating system when it comes to sales. Literally, I talk to clients and they'll be telling me that, oh, like I haven't gotten a client this week. And because I, I understand their business, I understand their social media, I also help them with social media. I will literally go to their profile and I'll see a lead who has directly said that they want help on their social media. And there is no comment underneath that person's comment. And I'll say to my client, what about that person? <gasps> oh my gosh. I forgot about that person. Oh, this happens all the time. So the mindset of there's just no, there's no people, there's no clients. It's because you're just not looking for them. I had another client, Claudia. She hadn't made more than a hundred dollars in her coaching business before she started working with me. And she got to a point where she was at rock bottom, like, she really needed to turn things around. I think she had like $5 in a bank account. And I said to her, yeah, I understand. Like I've been there, have a cry, do what you need to do, release the emotion and then put your big girl pants on and figure it out. And with my clients, I know that, I know that their conversions are a minimum of 25% when they follow my framework, my conscious sales method. So I said to her, in order to make X amount, which is what, what she needed to make, I said, you need to book in 12 sales calls. Book in 12 sales calls and you make three sales. Like I can pretty much guarantee that if you book in 12 sales calls, you follow my framework, you'll make three sales. So you make like three grand. At the time, she was charging $1,000 for her coaching. And she said, but Nina, I don't know where all these people are. I don't know where all these leads are. And I said, you need to look for them. I said, where are some places you can look for? And this was me helping her activate her RAS. She gave me a couple of examples. And I said, okay, I'm going to give you some now. And I don't necessarily want you to write them down, but I want you to see that when you activate your RAS, you can find multiple opportunities. And I gave her, I literally rattled off about 12 to 15 different options for her to look for clients. She closed her first 12 grand in her first six weeks. And she'd never made that much money in her coaching business ever. And one of the things I talk about when it comes to conscious sales is it, it's very much 
an integration of the energy, the skill set, and the mindset of sales. Energy and mindset are the foundational pieces. And then comes the skill set. So if you are someone who, who you don't feel you have a high level of skill set, honestly, the biggest thing that you need to do is speak to more people and speak to more people being in your heart and leaving your insecurities to the side. So one of the key points that Nick asked me before I came on, on here, what are one of, one of the five key points that you will talk about? And, and one of the points was the secret to accelerating your growth in your coaching business or in your business is honestly to take more action and take more action with the highest paying activities that's actually going to generate you an income. Because most people, one, aren't taking enough action and two, aren't taking enough action with the with the 20% of activities that will yield 80% of the results. It's the 80-20 rule. And I know that most people don't feel confident in sales. And one of my other quotes, and this is my other favorite one, action precedes confidence. You cannot be confident in something until you've given it enough of a go, until you've done it enough, until you've done the 40,000 hours in becoming a master at it. And I know people making 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 months that still do not really understand sales, but they speak to enough people and purely from a place of numbers, a place of audience, because they, they have a big audience and a place from deeply caring about what it is that they offer, they've been able to make a successful income in their business. I help them refine it. I help them refine their sales skills. And that's very easy to then double and triple their income because I help them see the actual blind spots when it comes to their sales. But you do not need to have an incredibly high level of sale, a sales skill in order to make one an income and in order to make a full-time income. Again, if you speak to enough people, if you make offers from your heart and you deeply, 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 deeply care okay. about what it is you offer, you will make sales. It is a fact. The thing is, if you speak to 500 people, someone is bound to buy from you. If you care about what it is that you're, what it is that you're offering, someone's bound to buy from you. The thing is, most people take years to speak to 500 people. The sooner you can speak to those 500 people, if you can speak to 500 people in a year, which is just one point something per people a day, right? It's not even two people a day. If you speak to, if you speak to two people a day, your learning curve will be much shorter, much faster, and your skill set will be higher. And you'll gain more confidence. So I would love to see more entrepreneur, entrepreneurs taking more aligned action. Let's go back to these comments. I'd love to know how this is resonating for everybody. Is there anything that you guys would like me to dive deeper in? Is there any questions that you have so far? Well, do people not invest in themselves? Yes, that's true, Jeffrey. At the same time, I find that the more we invest into ourselves, the more we attract people who also invest into themselves. One of my, my very first business mentors said to me, Nina, you're your first sale. If you don't invest in support, how can you expect someone else to invest in support? So the more I know that I show up for myself, the more that I know I show up in my business, in my personal life, the more I actually attract those people because like, like attracts like. Any tips when you're so close to closing a deal, but the customer has to sleep on it or go have a coffee? <laughs> mm, David. So a big thing about what I teach in Conscious Sales is the sale happens before the sale. It's not about talking, 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 sell. It's how are you building the relationship from the very first interaction, like dating. 
how are you wooing that person? How are you helping them feel seen, heard, understood, supported, cared about, loved from the very start? And so a big part of supporting someone in making a decision not only happens in that moment when you make the offer, but it also happens in the lead up to it. It's like foreplay. You can't expect us to take a girl home out of nowhere, right? There needs to be some dating. There needs to be some dates. There needs to be some foreplay. You need to get excited. You need to have the anticipation. A lot of people want it to be really fast. A lot of people are like, yep, cool, sale, done. And that's why in real estate, they say, it's not even just in real estate, but I learned this in real estate, fortune is in the follow-up. And I talk about this on my TED Talk because when we follow up with people, we're pretty much telling them that we care. When we don't follow up with someone, we're pretty much saying, oh, I didn't, you didn't buy off me right away, so I'm going to forget about you now. And honestly, most people do not follow up. The majority of people do not follow up. It used to take on average seven touch points or interactions. It's called touch points, but it's pretty much an interaction before someone bought. I think it's like 11 or 12 now because of we, we live in the, in the information age. So many people are expecting to touch base with someone once and, and that person buy. This is, the way, this is why advertising is so powerful because when someone sees an ad, they see it over and over and over and over again and ends up getting ingrained into their subconscious mind. So when the opportunity is presented to them, it doesn't feel like a new opportunity. Anything that is new has some innate reptilian part of our brain that makes it feel not safe. As a society, we have also latched onto money as our security. So to invest feels like a visceral experience of fear. It's pretty, like you guys can research this. The fight or flight mechanism is different now than it, it was when we were cavemen. We don't have lions chasing us anymore. Well, most of us who are here on this call, you know, live in a, in a pretty technological country. But we have associated fight or flight and security with money as a society. So it's going to take touch points. It's going to take rapport. It's going to take follow-up. It's going to take you going that little bit extra, you going that extra mile to show someone that you care because you do care. It's not about pretending to care. And this is why you deeply need to find something you care about to be able to to sell it, whether it's a product or a service. And I just want to share with you guys, because I don't know if there's anyone here who sells anything on behalf of anyone else. It is a million times easier selling a product and service for someone else than it does selling your own. It took me nine months to make commission in real estate and seven years to build my business to its first six figures. And I remember when I went into being a coach, I thought, oh, I can sell $750,000 properties. Surely I can, I can sell a, a little bit of coaching. It took me like four years to sell my first $1,000 package. And now my packages are five figures, my higher ticket ones. Because I've done the work, because I have continually asked the market what it needs. I've continually had those conversations. Oh, is that a doggy or a cat? I can't tell, oh, it's a doggy. <laughs> yes, it's a numbers game. But if we want to come from a place of integrity and heart and alignment, then it's important that we're not just going through the numbers for the sake of going through numbers, but we're going through numbers with a lot of intention, with a lot of presence. And when I say to you guys, you know, it's going to take a few touch points, it doesn't necessarily need to take a really long time. I've had someone add me on social media, didn't know anything about me. And within a week, 
invest 12 grand. It's because I know how to build a high level of intimacy with my audience very quickly. But there's many touch points in that week. And if you are unwilling to woo your client and you are unwilling to go that little bit of that extra mile, then it makes me question, do you deeply care about the person you are serving and do you deeply care about what it is that you are here to birth in the world? Because I believe in, as an entrepreneur, there are three reasons why we become an entrepreneur. There are three main reasons. And in different stages of entrepreneurship, it, it might move around with what, what's the priority. I did a masterclass on this uh, about a year ago. Um, it was influence, impact, and income. So we want to be an entrepreneur because we want to make more money. We realize that working in a job is just a, you know, the inflation grows more than how much we can get a pay rise in a job, right? We just realize it's not good enough for us anymore. Um, influence, impact, and income. Yeah, so the other one, so other than income, the other one is we want to be able to do what we want when we want freedom. We want to be able to go on holidays. We want to be able to hang out with our friends. We want to be able to have time with our kids. We want to be able to fly to the other side of the world if a family member is sick. We want the freedom to do what we want with whom we want. And obviously that ties into money. And the third reason why I believe we become entrepreneurs is because we know that there is something we are here to give and share the world that we just cannot do in a job. There is like this restless energy of, oh, I feel like I have more to give and no one's listening to my ideas. And I feel like I've got this amazing idea and no one's listening to me, but it needs, like people need to, people need to know. And I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that there's something that they need to know. So when we get clear on what those things are for us that are pulling us in the direction and there's no shame around any of it, there is no, if we can release the shame around wanting to have more money, if we can release the shame around wanting to have a day to ourselves a week, if we can release the shame with wanting to be able to do what we want, when we want, with whom we want, so that we can impact the world in, in a more impactful way and we find a product or a service that we align with, that we truly, 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 deeply, deeply, deeply care about. If you guys speak to enough people, you are going to make sales because your heart and your passion is the one thing that you cannot fake. It's the one thing that people will buy beyond you saying the perfect thing beyond the perfect website, beyond the perfect social media presence, beyond a massive following. It's who you are as a person and your heart. Nick, how am I going for time? I just keep talking. <laughs> We're doing pretty well. We've got uh, maybe sort of uh, 10 minutes or so. So uh, any time between now and 10 minutes. So. That'll be a good time for people to ask questions as well. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to know if you guys even would like to unmute yourself, if you like, or put it into the chat. I'd love to hear if you have any questions or any of your biggest takeaways that you've got. Passion is everything. Actually, I do have a question, uh, Nina, and yeah. uh, that is, uh, there's some very successful, um, how should I put this, uh, timeshare salespeople uh, out there, and I'll, I'll use timeshare because I used to work in that industry. In fact, I was trained by timeshare salespeople to sell insurance, so you can imagine what that combination was like. Um, so there are some people that are really sort of quite successful, well, financially successful in there, um yet uh we know that sometimes the the way that they sell there is definitely no empathy in yes. there there's there's none of that there yep. um why wouldn't we go down the track of uh just emulating that type of uh sales you know strategy as opposed to sort of embracing something that was a lot more empathetic mm. so d martini i had the honor of him um interviewing him for my book um and one of the things that he says all the time is I would rather have the whole world against me than my own soul. Oh my 
So if it feels in alignment for you to be in integrity and to deeply care about the success that you have, but be fulfilled in the success that you have, then as entrepreneurs, we want to feel good about what it is that we're offering. If we're purely driven for money, then it means that our values will come secondary to money. It means that we will choose to manipulate and lie um, and just chase chase the next thing, chase the next goal. And, and there are really successful salespeople, financially successful, that do do that. And there are also people who are financially successful who commit suicide and who have broken down families and don't have a relationship with their children. So, you know, it's still our choice. You still get a choice as to who you would like to emulate and who you would like to model. But for me, I want to live an amazing life, not just with where I'm going, but who I am today. And that's a big part of what I talk about in my book is when I was faced with all these challenges in real estate, I was constantly asking myself, who do I want to be? Because I'm not willing to sacrifice who I am just to make more money. I want to be able to be who I am and make a difference and feel fulfilled, even if it means it takes me a little bit longer to make more money. Which is ironic because over the long term, the people who care more are the ones who end up building the longer term businesses because the ones who don't get found out pretty quick and they don't last very long in any industry. And actually, interesting enough, some of the people that I know that uh, were trained the same way that I was and just really followed that ended up uh, in bankruptcy. Um, mm. And uh, while others uh, you know, came through that uh, you know, you know, and had a level of success, both financially and um, you know, with family and those other things that are important as well, too. Yeah. Um, Tiger, I just saw your your comment. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Um, Tiger just put, it's mesmerizing to listen to you. I'm hanging on to every word. I must buy your book no matter how slim it is. Quality over quantity. Your sincerity is unmatched. Um, so Chris will actually put the link down below. You, can, you guys can get the book at www.thenakedyoubook.com. There is an Amazon link for people internationally and there is a Booktopia link for those people who are local to Australia. Um, and I did actually recently film the, literally last week, I filmed the audio, but it needs to, the audio book still needs to be edited. Um, so that will be available um, at one point. So if you wanted to contact me or you're going to get a support email um, at that on that website. And if you let us know that you want the audio book, then we can send you the details of the audio book when that's available. It's something that I realized. And, you know, when it comes to sales, guys, I'm just going to tie this in. We all have something incredibly unique about us, every single person. The challenge is most of us shy away from what makes us us. And we tend to feel insecure about what makes us us because it's different. So growing up, I was always getting in trouble for talking too much. Literally every single one of my reports. Nina's a good worker, but when she finishes her work, she talks to everyone and she talks too much. Nina doesn't stop talking. Nina's very disruptive because she talks to everybody. And I remember when I started making a proper income in my business, my dad said to me, who would have thought you would have gotten paid to talk? <laughs> <laughs> so I've become a lot more, I've learned to embrace the fact that I do talk a lot. I've learned to embrace the fact that, yeah, it, it's a big part of what makes me, me. And so you know, what makes you, you, and how can you bring more of that out into the world? Because people don't want the same stuff they've always had. People want something that is different. And so what makes you uniquely you is exactly what needs to be at the forefront of your brand, the forefront of your message, and needs to be exactly what you step into, as insecure as that may feel. Any tips in building trust and relationship in the first five to 10 minutes of meeting a potential customer and overcoming the stereotype of being a salesperson? Yes, I have a very simple answer to this question, David. David, I'm loving all these questions. Ask questions and seek to understand. That is it. I can tell when someone is, and it's funny because not everybody knows I'm in sales, right? Like when I'm in the shops or when I'm on the phone to someone and they're trying to pitch me something and I'm just like, I know exactly what they're doing. 
<laughs> like I see everything, right? Like I'm a sales coach. Um, but you know that, and I know all of you would be familiar, familiar with this, you know, that feeling of please stop talking. I really just do not care about what it is that you're trying to sell me. You know, that feeling it's because that person hasn't stopped to ask me what I want. They just think I want it. And they're trying to sell me something I don't want or that I don't need or that I don't care about. But if they just took a moment to say, hey, how are you going? Tell me how your business is going. What's a priority for you right now? Oh, amazing. Like, that's great. We don't offer anything in that department, but I might know someone who I can connect you to. Would you like me to connect you with them? People who get a rap for being pushy sales people are too busy thinking about what they want to say and what they want to sell and what their agenda is instead of listening to that human being first finding out who they are what they want what they need what they care about and the thing is until you know they care about something they really don't care about anything that comes out of your mouth one of the things that I learned in real estate, probably about six months in, is I stopped giving advice to a lot of people when they didn't ask for it. The last thing I want is a sleazy salesperson like speaking at me for 15 minutes about something that I just really is not something that I'm, I care about. Like a really simple example is, is I'm obviously in the service-based industry, somebody pitching to me the value of products or the value of, oh, you can store your stuff with us and we'll, we'll help you with the packaging. And I'm just, I'll just be like, like you, you haven't even asked me what it is that I offer. So David, one of the fastest ways to build rapport is to ask questions and listen without the agenda of what you want to talk about from a place of, oh, I'm going to try and sell this to someone. Just get to know the person first. I have gotten referrals in real estate in my own business, not from people who have bought and sold off me, but from people who have referred me to their family and friends. And referrals are one of the strongest types of leads because they're already bought in. There is, all, there is already a level of trust from the get-go because someone they trust, trusts me. So a lot of people think about the immediate, the immediate sale, what they're going to get today. But if you think about this as a long-term mission, a long-term vision, a long-term game, first and foremost, we want to deeply care about people. And when we deeply care, it doesn't matter whether they buy from us now, whether they buy from us later, or if they don't buy from us. If we can add value to people's lives based on who they are and what they want and what they desire and what matters to them right now, they will see you as someone who is an expert and someone that can help them. And the thing is 97% 97 of an audience isn't actually the type who is ready to make a decision right now. Only 3% of your audience at any given time is a hot buyer that's ready to make a decision right now. And we can actually move the mindset of some of things like 40% of those people into becoming a hot buyer. When you understand the skill set and the energy and the mindset of all of that, of sales. However, my point is when we can build rapport with someone and build that trust, you end up creating the longevity of your business because someone who is not wanting to buy from you right now, if you, in your integrity, help them from your heart and you know that they're not ready for what it is that you offer, when they are, they will more than likely come to you even if it's been three, six, 12 months. And that's the power of compounding. The longer that you're doing your business, the longer that you're keeping consistent with your message because you've gotten clarity on who you are in the marketplace, your own gifts and how you want to provide value into the world, 
people will know you for that thing. And I would rather have loyal long-term clients rather than short-term clients who cancel. So David, I hope that helps. Paul, well, most of my funnel a funeral live stream sales, bad word in this context, are referrals from funeral homes, church, family, apostles. Amazing. So Paul, there is an, um, there's a massive opportunity there for you. I'm wondering, do you give referral commissions to any of these people who give you referrals? Um, not commissions, although I had that in the back of my mind at some point long ago. Um, but the, an example is that white lady, uh, I did a funeral today, um, that white lady connected me with the family. I've got another one for the same office, white lady in the same church tomorrow. And they have booked me this afternoon for one in a fortnight in a different church. Um, because I have visited them and I've given them a brochure and I still see them around at other services. So, you know, I've done other services just right at the moment. It's good that there is today, tomorrow and in a fortnight from three different arrangers in the same office. Yeah. Um, so that, my, that to be the pattern. Yeah. So my belief is I, I, I'm very much always looking at the action as opposed to just the words people use. And I believe that's why that, I didn't like the word sale. In the, yeah, in the that's okay. Of a funeral, it's yeah. helping the family. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. It's people yeah. buying things, right? Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, my bad. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were talking. Just remind me of what we were just talking about. <clears throat> the referrals, referrals from yes. the funeral home. So, funeral directors. It's, it's easy to say thank you. I believe that we show the universe that we are abundant when we can show it through action. So I always refer a commission, I always offer a commission to anyone who refers me any work. Mm. One, it incentivizes them to keep giving you work. Two, I would not have been connected with that person if it wasn't for that person. So I'm giving them gratitude for that connection. And an, an idea for you is you can even say um, that you'll donate. I don't know what your, what your offer mm. is priced at, but you can say, you know, I'll donate $50 to your church. I'll donate $100 to your church for every client you give me. Like mm. if you don't want to do a direct commission, I encourage you to, to do something Mm. along those lines look mm. it's completely up to you there's no right or wrong I just believe that when we can show abundance then the universe is like oh you're so abundant I'm going to keep giving you more yeah because I've been I haven't liked the idea of paying for referrals but yeah making a donation or something like that that would that would be more tasteful yeah um, or something towards yeah <laughs> amazing does anyone else have any other questions uh tiger it's a long shot for someone in my situation right now but is nina available for an online one-to-one -one mentoring at all i feel like that she works at such a deep level with completely understands i wish to achieve by helping with members of my container so this actually leads to the the door prize right nick and the giveaway Giveaway. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so maybe um, if you've got, because uh, you do have something to give people. Uh, so maybe if you um, uh, run through that and then uh, we do have a door prize as well, we'll get you to talk about. Amazing. So uh, I know that everyone here is an entrepreneur. One of the things that I talk about are solar line clients. As an entrepreneur, again, we want to work with the people who we want to work with. If we were going to work with people who were going to piss us off, that's what a job is for, right? We don't necessarily get to choose the people who we get to work with. So I believe that we need to be really discerning about who are the clients we take on board and don't take on board, especially when we're in service-based industries, because it's taking our energy and our time. And that is the most precious commodity because we're not going to get time back. So I call them solo line clients. There is a meditation that I filmed. Um, it's free. You can go, Chris can put the link down below. It's just um, sacmeditation.com forward slash Nina. It's like seven minutes long. 
I use this meditation every single time I'm ready to call in a bulk more clients, every time my clients are ready to call in more clients. And I go into the depths of the mindset and the energy required to call in more, to receive more. I don't go over the skill set in that meditation. It's literally just the mindset and the energy. So that's available to everybody on there. Um, and the door prize, is that right, Nick? We're we moving on yes. to the door prize? Yes, yes. So the door prize is um, I'm going to give away a 20-minute clarity call to someone live on this call. And so the clarity call is to support you with anything that you'd like to ask me. Obviously, I'm, I know quite a lot about sales and sales processes. Um, but honestly, a lot of people are just really lacking clarity right now in what they need to focus on, even if it's something as simple as knowing what are the activities that are going to generate the highest amount of income. What are the things that you need to be focusing on every single day or every single week at least? Um, but for those of you who do want to reach out and do, do want some level of support, I'm more than happy to explore that with you. And just so you know, if anyone does end up purchasing anything, I will be giving Nick some, some form of commission. Um, but you guys can find me on Instagram or on Facebook at Nina, the naked coach. So Instagram is at Nina, the naked coach and Facebook is just facebook.com forward slash Nina, the naked coach. Awesome. And we do have a special way of uh, drawing this tonight. We have our wheel of names. And uh, so everyone's name is um, uh, is in there. And just remember, you need to be in the room to win as well, too. So uh, if anyone sort of uh, disappeared and they won, then uh, we redraw it. So lucky you. All right. So uh, get your intentions right. I can see Tiger there is really sort of wanting to win this one here. So let's see if your name comes up or who it is. So let's have a uh, virtual drum roll, please. And the winner is Harry. So uh, Harry's still in the room here. Just give us a wave or a shout or a hello. Uh, Nick. Yes. Um, I'm here as a, uh, uh, an observer today. Um, I don't have any sales problems and I'd prefer to give it to somebody that is really anxious about uh, some of the things that Nina's been talking about. She's quite interesting, but uh, I'm way past her uh, thing in my career. <laughs> You're at the Here other I've end of things there. For 80, 50 years. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that very generous yeah. of you, Harry. We can, um, we can redraw that then, if you're happy about that. Yeah, that's fine with me because... Uh, um, it's not something that I'd be taking. Well, I'd want to avail myself of. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, that's very generous of you. All right. So uh, we have got a, another spin of the wheel there. And uh, Tiger, you're in with a chance again. And this time it is Anita. Anita O'Brien, are you still here? Actually, I can see Anita here. She's uh, one with a dark screen and uh, no photo. She says, yes, I am. So uh, fantastic. Awesome. So uh, what we'll do is uh, we will connect uh, you, Anita, with uh, Nina tomorrow by email. So uh, check your email and uh, then you can organize um, uh, how to uh, uh, get together to uh, claim your prize. So uh, congratulations. And uh, also thank you to uh, Nina for sharing with us tonight. Uh, so many uh, awesome uh, tips and, and uh, things that you talked about tonight. Um, and I think for small business and, uh, you know, people that are sort of starting out and even for people that are in sort of larger businesses training their staff, all of what you said tonight is uh, highly relevant. And I think if more people embrace sales the way that you spoke about it, uh, we'd be in a better space uh, business-wise and uh, you know, country-wise as well. So thanks very much for uh, coming on and sharing tonight. I know Tuesday night is your sacred uh, day where you don't do a lot of work. So I do really appreciate the uh, fact that you've made the exception to uh, come and join us tonight. So let's give uh, Nina a big virtual round of applause for uh, for tonight. Um, and if you uh, do want to watch this again, or you want to refer someone to it to uh, have a look at it, it will be up on the Smashgo YouTube channel tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. 
Uh, we'll drop the link into Facebook. Best thing to do is to go and subscribe to the channel. And when you do subscribe to it, you'll see a little bell appear to the right hand side of the subscribe button. Click that bell and then you'll get a notification as soon as the replay is uh, up and available. Uh, and uh, next week is our final week for Business Owners Smashing Online for this year. And it's going to be a wee bit different in that we're going to run a uh, almost workshop style. And, uh, and so I'll be running this for the very last session. And uh, what we'll explore at the request uh, of someone um, who uh, really wanted uh, to uh, dive into this a bit deeper because we're reaching the end of the year and we are planning for a uh, sensational 2023. Next week's topic is how to generate 12 months worth of content in uh, 60 minutes without writing a single word. So uh, it is going to be a workshop style and uh, you will be able to do it without necessarily writing a word. We've got sort of a, a process around how to do that. Uh, so if you're interested in that, come and uh, join us uh, next week. And uh, as I said, it'll be slightly different. And the apps and tools that we're going to talk about, I'm going to weave that through the uh, session uh, next week as well. So slightly off format, uh, but it's going to be a good session as well. So thanks for uh, everyone coming along tonight. I'm so glad you could make it. Thanks again, uh, Nina, for uh, spending your evening uh, with us as well too. And uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you all again for our last session uh, next week. Go and have a sensational evening.